I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. This is my Atari ST and I'm just going to show you this because I've been working on a top secret project to enable any sort of I.O. device to connect to Atari ST so you can use any kind of mouse or pointing gear. However, as part of my test procedure, I accidentally blew up my Atari ST keyboard. <laughs> Hurrah! That's exactly the sort of thing you want to happen, of course. So I'm just going to unplug my mouse extension, and that's why I've basically blown out the mouse port. But I thought this gives me a good opportunity to show you that you can repair things like this Atari ST, which is a total battleship. Just putting that to one side. Um, yeah. So this is the bottom of the keyboard, and I'll zoom out so you can see it in its full glory. And I've got some tools to the side. Hopefully something will fit. So you've got here, and I'm, again, it's a bit unwieldy, so excuse me for my zooming in and out, but this is the bottom of the Tari. This is the mouse port here. This is the joystick port. Here you have a custom microcontroller. Again, very tough Hitachi part. And here you have basically a buffer. And I'm hoping in this envelope, which cost me a whole two pounds. There we go, another one. Because I pretty much concluded that I've blown up this buffer. So I got this replacement chip and golly gosh, it's still a current component. So that's fantastic. You have to get it in this dual inline pack, of course, because they do it in all these fancy, fancy modern packages. And you will see, if I just hold it up side by side, it's a direct replacement. Ignore the top number, it's the bottom number is the actual part. So I've got kind of some options here. I could unscrew all of the screws here on this um, sort of keyboard and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's loads of them. Or I could tr try something a bit naughty and that's really kind of kind of just to sort of cut this chip out and piggyback this on top and that would not be the recommended way but it would be a way so you can see the sort of pins line up so if you've got a means of chopping them then it might just work so i thought we've got nothing to lose here we're going to remove this chip anyway so why don't i just get some side cutters or something and see if it is even feasible to do that one other option you've got of course is like a little dremel -y thing and i don't really fancy getting my dremel out of the box but yeah you could just run it straight along there and that would sort of take that chip clean out so I'm going to try to cut it here on the sort of top edge. You can see right at the top edge, I'm just going to tilt the angle. If you can get it at this sort of fat bit at the top, so there's a bit of metal left, you could actually could sort of solder onto what's left. So let's see if it's possible. So the keyboard is trying to jump around, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I can tell, I just cut that one and it's already kind of bent that pin in a really uh, scary sort of a way. Mm. Ah, oh, you know what, sod it. Let's do it properly. Let's do it properly. So, <laughs> ignore everything I said. We're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna unscrew the keyboard, be done with it. Let's think of it as an opportunity to sort of check out the bottom of the keyboard for any damage as well. Remember, I've basically had a transient voltage pumped into this keyboard. I think it might have gone negative. I think it might have pulled the voltage rail down and that's what caused the damage, but I might never ever know. The symptom is though, by the way, if you've got this, the symptom was that no matter which way I m move the mouse, it was always moving up and to the left. So it's some sort of quite bizarre sort of uh, effect. I'm just noting there are a few different screw sizes so far, which is always fun. So try to keep them in order. I'm keeping the fat screws with the metalwork whence they came. Oh, these aren't too bad actually. So yeah, don't worry too much about this when you have to do it. I'm using just a tiny, you know, little teeny weeny screwdriver and it's got enough torque to do this job. So that is a blessing for sure. This is weird, look at this blue wire here. It's like a massive jumper. If someone made a boo-boo. Although well, it does sort of show on the um, PCB that it is a wire to go between the two. That's really odd. I wonder why they did it that way. 
maybe it just saved them having to put another layer on that PCB. So I'm just going to try to see. Yeah, I mean, feasibly, you could just lever up the edge of the keyboard and try to get in there, but don't do that. It's probably not worth the trouble, and it will be trouble. So we've got a bunch of screws here underneath this sort of plastic covering here, so I'm not quite sure why that's there. It's starting to get a bit hard to work now. I've got so many screws piled up on these edges. If I just brush this keyboard in the wrong way, it's going to take them all down onto my floor of doom. So I'm it's a bit uh, weary of experimenting on a 30-year-old computer with my interface project. However, uh, I think it's such a cool thing to do. And it'll be so cool to be able to leverage the power of a lot of these small boards you can buy now, you know, these Raspberry Pis and whatnot, that it just had to be done because I could not believe that there's no satisfactory mouse solution for me. And now that I've got my side mouse port fitted to my Atari, I want to really make sort of use of that and I would love for that to be a USB. And that's what we'll end up with. Right, keyboard is ready to come apart. It's, it's kind of, oh, there's one more screw. I say it kind of doesn't want to come, but that's pretty obvious. There's a screw still here. The last screw. It's always the same. If you're ever undoing a gearbox on a car or something, there'll always be one screw you've missed and you just will not figure out why these things won't come apart. Wow, look at this. A bit dusty and crusty. Just noticing one of the keys here doesn't have a cap on it. Just trying to figure out what key that would be. It looks like, you know, near the enter key or something. I'm sure it must have had a cap. You can see around here, just looking at these patterns. It would have been that one. That's so strange. I wonder if someone removed it. Because they don't look like they kind of really want to fall off. <laughs> Right, let's not worry about that. We're all about getting off this IC. So I'm going to very, very gingerly put this away. Although that kind of stays together. That's kind of cool. Keyboard aside. And then I'm going to decide how am I going to do this. I sort of could attack it with a soldering iron and some braid. Or, a bit more riskily, I could try some hot air. So let's do that. going to put something behind the actual IC so I'm going to put this little screwdriver and I'm going to lever it like that just put a tiny bit of pressure ah I hit some of those screws that I didn't want to hit let's try that again shall we and I'll hold it just so the camera can see both sides hopefully I'll just zoom in a little bit and if a bit of luck we'll see the moment it'll detach itself Just heating up all the ICs, IC pins sort of evenly. It's getting warmer. It's showing you what I'm up to. Coming. I could definitely feel the IC going. Come on, come on. Just gonna get the screwdriver under it in a slightly different way so I can lever it off. There she is, all gone.
So we need to clean up what's left now. So I'm just gonna put the soldering on, iron on. So hopefully we haven't damaged the PCB too much. There is actually a bit of damage and I'll show you. I did hold it on possibly a little bit too long. So there's a slight bubbling. Oh, is that the keycap we lost? Um, so yeah, we're gonna just have to clean that up just for ever so quickly before we get the uh, other components in. Right there. So you can see there's a slight bubbling, yeah. If you're worried about that, don't use the hot air, but sort of functionally, I don't think it's gonna cause us a problem. Oh no! Yeah, be careful with these, you can nudge them. <laughs> so that's two now, I've moved. So all we need is solder and iron. We've got that on, we've got some solder here, and we've got our soldering braid. So I do apologize for the position of the camera. Again, I can't move this board around. It's, they are so huge. You don't really appreciate how big a keyboard is till you've sort of got one that you're trying to work on. Just applying a bit of solder here. I want some fresh, fresh solder to work with. And then we're gonna try to wick it off. Well, actually, we've got the solder sucker. Let's try the sucker first, sucker. Yeah. Sounding a bit weedy, a bit anemic, but it's working. Four. Ah, oh, it's not sucking anymore. Five. Just about six, seven, eight, nine. Pad slightly damaged. Let's be careful with that one. That's where we had the bubble from the hot air. Fortunately, with these old school sort of PCBs, you can see even if you lift the pad here and it's damaged, it's only going as far as here, so you could kind of, but I prefer not to have to do that, for obvious reasons. Come on. We're getting there, we're getting there. So we just gotta be a bit careful when we're putting the new IC in. Because we've already damaged those pads slightly. Certainly don't really want to damage them anymore. And that is that. So very gingerly, I'm gonna turn this around. Everything on this side looks absolutely fine. So we've got the new IC. It's gonna want adjusting. So I'm gonna just push it on the edge slightly just to get those pins a little bit more parallel. Just a tiny bit more needed. Hooray, it's looking good. I'm just sort of taking a little bit of extra care because we know we had some null piece PCB tracks, but that's okay. It's all good. Now for the fun and hopefully easy bit. Soldering it back in. So, knowing what I know, I could have actually put a chip carrier in here instead. If I'm likely to blow this again, it would give me a far easier way to replace it. However, let's look on the positive and assume I'm not going to blow this bad boy up. And that's it. Should be job done. I think I've bent the LED here. That would have been a sticky out LED. So all that remains is that I pop it back in here. Oh, 
give it a blow. <laughs> now, now the tricky pit. Trying to work out which bits need to go where. So we've got two of these doodads, but there's three missing. So I'm going to have to have a think about this, decide which needs which. I think that only one lives here because these are really close together. You could never get two side by side and I don't think it's got a sort of footprint for that. So I'm just going to pop this in. I remember like in the olden days, ye olden days, you could buy a replacement uh, doohickeys for these. Ah, what about this one? Right, I'm going to have to stop the video and have a look and I took this apart, which bits were missing. Okay, through some deduction, I didn't bother stopping the camera, I think it's these two fell out. So that one and that one. I think this and the this one is sl a slave together because they're like the return key, but we're going to just roll with that. Take a punt, see what happens. Okay, seems pretty good. Whack all the screws in and jump cut. Crikey, that felt like a lot of screws. There is a lot of screws, no doubt about that. Um, uh, everything still kind of feels normal, apart from maybe this key. Doesn't look quite as legit as it did, but let's, let's all bung it back together, see if it works. So I'm going to put this in the case and we will... Uh, Try it out. Very apprehensive. The Atari ST is just booting up. I've got the keyboard in place. I really probably have to open it up and sort this button out, but that's fine. Oh, mercy me, the mouse. Up, down, left, right. Woohoo! Working fine. So really, there you go. If you, so if you've got that symptom where if you move the mouse left, it goes up and then you move it right, but it still goes up and that. There you go, it's your triple buffer. So all that leaves me to do now is just to take a few screws out of this corner, get this key working, and then start working again on my hack. Hope that's been of some use to you. Please don't be scared to repair your keyboard in the future. As ever, thanks for watching. Ah, much better. Don't be an idiot like me and put the little r contact rubbery spring thing in upside down. Luckily, these were near the edge of the PCB, so I could just undo a few screws, prise back the PCB and flip it over with some tweezers. Now that's all put back behind me though. Great, working Atari ST. And again, thanks for watching guys.